Welcome to Bio 205 Microbiology at Pima Community College. In this video, we're going to show you how to test the oxygen requirements of four different bacterial organisms. To start on the first day, you're going to have four different organisms. One is called Serratia liquefaciens, another is Pseudomonas aeruginosa, we also have Lactococcus lactis, and the stinky one, Clostridium spirogenes. In addition to your organisms, you're going to need plastic sterile loops, two petri plates, both of which are called brain heart infusion auger. We're going to incubate one plate in an aerobic condition just out in the air, and we're gonna incubate the second plate in an anaerobic condition. So in order to do that, we're gonna have an anaerobe jar, a gas pack to help us remove the oxygen, and an indicator strip, which I'll show you in a bit, that tells us whether or not oxygen has been depleted in our jar. So before we get started, we're gonna label our Petri plates as follows. We're gonna create four quadrants on our Petri plate. So I'm gonna create a big T, uh, essentially with four quadrants here on each plate. You can use a ruler if you want. I'm gonna indicate the, uh, you know, your initials here, your date, the type of auger, BHIA, just a reminder here. And this time we're gonna indicate air on one plate. And on the other plate, we're gonna indicate anaerobe. In addition, we're going to label each quadrant one quadrant is going to represent each bacterium. Now, instead of writing out the whole name, serratia liquefaciens, I'm just gonna write the initial. So I'm gonna write SL, PA, LL, and CS. You can review the names in the lab manual again later. I'm gonna repeat that for our other plate here. Once your two plates are labeled, you're ready to get started. So starting with the first bacterium here, serratia liquefaciens, remember that we would have to appropriately vortex these. I'm not showing you that portion here, but I am gonna gently mix by swirling. To aseptically remove my loop, I'm gonna feed out one, grab it by the edge, tip, pull out. I'm gonna dip into the bacteria once. And we're gonna perform what's called a spot inoculation. So I like to put my finger on the quadrant that I wanna lay the bacteria down on. In this case, the one labeled SL for serratia liquefaction. Pick up the plate. My finger is now in the position I wanna inoculate. And to spot inoculate, you're gonna to touch the loop down and you're gonna rub in a circular like motion. That's one Petri plate. As long as I don't touch this loop to anything else, I'm gonna repeat with the second. If you think you've contaminated your loop, you need to take a new one. So remember here, we're not looking for single colonies. We're not looking to see if it's a pure culture. Uh, in this case, we're just asking the question, can the bacteria grow in an aerobic or, and or an anaerobic condition? So we're just looking to see for, if it can grow. That's the first organism. We're gonna get it out of our field of view. We're gonna do the next one here, Pseudomonas aeruginosa. Repeat, take out your loop. If you didn't swirl or vortex, you can also additionally swirl with your loop. There's so much bacteria that is sort of stuck. This is a really sticky bacterium here. I have a lot left over, so I'm not gonna double dip. I've got enough to go around. I'm just gonna inoculate the second plate here.
The next one up is Lactococcus lactus. Now you do want to be careful uh, if you're adding a lot of liquid to the plate and you're tipping the plate, there's a possibility of it dripping. You can cross-contaminate your samples into the other quadrants. So you just want to be careful and pay attention. We have one more to go, which is Clostridium spirogenes. This particular bacterium is growing in what we call fluid bioglycolate medium. It's important that we actually don't mix this culture up if we want to keep using this culture in future um, days or the upcoming days or weeks. So oftentimes for students, I tell them, you don't have to swirl this particular one. But what you're going to do, I'm going to loosen my cap here. Take your loop. Remove your cap. You're just going to dip all the way to the bottom. And repeat for your second. Make sure you have your goggles on. You don't want any of these organisms getting in your eyes. Okay. And that's how you do your spot inoculations. We're done with our organisms. These can just go in the trash. Now, the petri plate that's labeled air is just going to stay out on the bench, or it's going to go in a bucket into an incubator. For the anaerobe plate, you guys, again, make sure you're not tipping the plate. You don't want to drip. But this is going to go into the anaerobe jar here, like so. So at the end of the experiment, you'd bring this up to your instructor. You'll see a metal rack. And this blue strip here tells us that there's currently oxygen present. And as oxygen becomes depleted in the jar, it's going to turn white. So that's just a quick visual that tells us our jar is the correct anaerobic condition. And that does take a few minutes for that to occur. So you're going to take your anaerobe plate. Our, our lid is on the bottom here. You're going to feed it into the metal rack. Place it into the jar. And before we can close this up, we're going to add our gas pack here. And this is going to help um, and are chemically chew up the oxygen in the jar, creating our anaerobic environment. So we tear it open. It's a sachet. You're going to learn about these in the lab manual. We don't have a lot of plates here, so I'm just going to kind of stick it in. It doesn't really matter exactly where you position it, but you do got to fit it into the jar. This has a rubber seal here. So we're going to line up the lid with the jar. And then we're going to screw it into position. You don't want to over tighten this, uh, but you do want to make sure it's secured. Your instructor will help you with this part. Okay. And over time, that little blue strip ideally should be turning white. It'll create an anaerobic condition. And when we come back on the second day of this experiment, we'll see which bacteria grew on which plate. In some cases, they'll only grow on one. Um, in some cases, they'll grow on both. And we're going to explore the different oxygen requirements bacteria have, which is quite a large spectrum. So we'll take a look at these during the second portion of this video. Welcome to the second part of the oxygen requirement lab. Now that our petri plates have incubated in an aerobic and an anaerobic condition for 24 to 48 hours, we're ready to examine our results. In order to get your petri plate out of the anaerobe jar, we're going to unscrew the top. We're going to remove the lid. Watch out, it's going to smell. One of you would be lucky. Your strip you can see here is white. 
And that tells us inside the jar was an anaerobic condition, no oxygen. So that's perfect. We're done with this. This is the proper position for the sachet. But we got it in the jar. We're going to take out our Petri plate now. Notice these have been labeled a little bit differently from the initial demo. These were ready for us to show you in terms of demonstration. So what we can see here is one plate is labeled O2, one does not have any oxygen. And you can kind of see the spot inoculations here. We'll show you formal pictures in D2L as well. But you can see the spots where the bacteria are growing or not growing. So you would record, you're going to record your observations of which organisms grew where. Um, but in addition to this, another way we can test oxygen requirements is through what we call catalase testing. The catalase test requires the addition of hydrogen peroxide. If a bacterial organism produces the catalase enzyme, it's going to have a chemical reaction that creates oxygen. And we're going to see that form as bubbles. The, this is one of the uh, multiple protective enzymes that aerobic organisms or the variety of aerobic organisms can use to survive in the presence of oxygen. So we're going to learn more about this test um, in the lab manual, but I'm going to demonstrate here how we would perform it in lab. Take note, you could take the bacteria from the Petri plate and add these to glass slides, but to simplify this today, um, and depending on the manual you're reading, you could also do the catalase test directly on the Petri plate itself. So using, let's say, the oxygen plate first, we want to examine who of the four organisms, or which of the four, um, have the enzyme. You can open your plate. You want to make sure you have your safety goggles on and your gloves. This is a little tricky. I'm going to test Pseudomonas aeruginosa first. And all I'm going to do here is take my hydrogen peroxide and place a drop. Couple drops. I don't know how good you guys can see this, but there's lots of bubbling. When we see the presence of lots of bubbling, that indicates that catalase um, is present. It makes sense because Pseudomonas grew aerobically and it has the catalase enzyme and that helps protect it in an oxygen environment. The next one over here, serratia liquefaction's pointing here. Repeat. We're also getting a very decent reaction for catalase. Makes pretty good sense. I am um, in the aerobic condition and it also has the catalase enzyme. This does not mean that they're both strict aerobes. So we want to make sure when we're reading through the manual that we clarify the difference between what we call facultative, strict, um, there's some terms that we're going to learn about here. But take note, both are growing aerobically, both, both have catalase. There's only one other organism growing on here. And that's our Lactococcus lactis. Clostridium did not grow um, in an aerobic condition, so we can't test it from this Petri plate. So we have one more that we can look at. swirling some hydrogen peroxide around. And I'm really not getting significant bubbling, especially where I have the most growth here. It's kind of hard to see. Interestingly, lactococcus can grow aerobically, but we don't see catalase, and we're going to investigate why when we talk about lab later. So two have strong catalase reaction, one here does not. There's one more organism we want to test, and that's our Clostridium sporogenes. It did not grow aerobically. It did grow a little bit on the anaerobe plate. So we're going to test the catalase reaction from this particular plate here. After the addition of hydrogen peroxide, there's no bubbling occurring here. No catalase reaction. And take note, it could not grow aerobically, right? 
So we're going to explore the oxygen requirement for this bacterium in our lab as well. I don't need to retest the other organisms unless I wanted to, unless you wanted to, but once you've tested each, you're done with the catalase test. These petri plates should be disposed in your biohazard. Make sure you've capped your hydrogen peroxide. Make sure you wash your hands when you're finished. <laughs>